Welcome to JR Fiction Consort. Sit back and relax and enjoy the story of my early days. Narrating this is Jimmy. Jimmy. Alright. Twelve thirty PM Central. Meanwhile, back in the car, the trio begin their conversation from the dining hall. Jill, I really think you should think about leaving that church, Ken said. Thank you, Jared said. Look, well, Ken. You know I would love to go to your church. But afterwards, I'll tell you about that cheese rice burrito. Ken chuckled. You two characters, Dave uh, Dave Smith said, laughing, as the car pulls out from the parking lot on Broadway. 1 p.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, at the White House, President Clinton is speaking on his phone to his wife, Hillary. This could take me some time. Situation in the control. Yes, Hillary, it is. Well, thank God, Bill, because my plane departs at three fifteen. Hello. Hi. Why don't you come home soon? I'll be home Friday morning, early, Bill. Okay. Now listen to me. Listen to me and listen to me good. I want you to go ahead. Go ahead and just concentrate, Bill. That girl. Secret Service told me to put her in a hotel, so it'll be okay. She'll be in a hotel tomorrow. Better be. I'm getting her a job working as a receptionist for Webster Huddle. Who, uh... Who's moving around some things in justice? He got the word from Janet Reno. I suspect something suspicious. Don't worry about it. One thing I want to talk to you about is this is Henrik appointment. Bill, wait on that as long as possible. Honey, we got less than two months and then all systems go. We're going to have problems. I wouldn't worry about it. Whitewater, Hillary. Don't talk to me about what one. I'm sure you and Webb can work something out. Talk to you later, honey. Bye-bye. Four PM Central. Jim arrives in Houston and is warmly greeted by Claude. <sighs> My, my, man, my, I'm ever grateful to see you again. I get so tired of England. I'm ready to be back in the good old U.S. of A. Take up a rental car. They drove to the Houston Hilton at Plaza at University Place. 5.35 p.m. In Houston... Jim orders some beef fajitas with cheese, queso, lettuce, and jalapenos. Room service uh, comes and he calls Betsy to tell her that he is back on American soil. 6.30 p.m. 
Jr. and Ken were playing a contract running, but now they're listening to Blake Carter. You ever noticed how last night, how President Clinton seemed to ignore the gaze of John the False, but couldn't help but notice Danny DeVito enough to make a joke. Blake Carter said, Well, I'm here for this weekend edition to tell you it's all over. It's all over uh, CompuServe and Prodigy. Let's hope that the gossip columns don't get a hold of this because it could make relations between the Clinton administration and Italian Americans look really bad. I'm a King James uh, Southern Baptist and I frown on gossip. 8, 8 15 p.m. JR and Ken are sitting at the snack bar at Sneed drinking bottles of Dr. Pepper when Jennifer Bowers walks in. She stood you up again. Didn't she? Jennifer uh, said, hugging him. Yes, she did. But I think that he should go ahead and dump her, Ken said. We're in the coin off period. I'll hang out with her if she thinks or at least quit the, if you could at least quit thinking that Brad hangs the moon, Jared said. Yes, she chose Brad over me for lunch today. But I had lunch with my pals from Crockett House. And believe you me, the discussion was a lot better been over the uh, personality of Han Solo. She's weird going out with that, with that real, uh, that weird chair. Ken sputtered in laughter. That's the truth. 9 p.m. At the condo, Jennifer talks to J.R. and Ken. Promise me, J.R., that you will call me when you need me, Jennifer said. If she stands you up again, that's it. You shouldn't tolerate her being a Christian princess who pushes you away. If I had my way, Ken said, J.R. would have dumped her today and go out and go out with you. Jennifer gives J.R. another hug and a peck on the cheek. J.R., I would do anything for you. Don't let this suck up princess uh, Crush your heart. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> okay, let's go to October 25 October 25th JR wakes up dress, dresses in the dark and goes into the living room to study today he would be having 
swimming practice at five uh, with, with Stony Rosen. He would then go and have breakfast with him and Ken at the Spirit Club. Lou Joe would then drop Ken off at the apartment. And JR would have a government class, study at the library, and then head off to Spanish class. 5 a.m. At the Sibley, JR is swimming with Stony Rosen. What they did to you was a cruel joke, Stony said. And it was so easy, easy statistical. Ted McDonald goes to the same church and he saw how they treated you. Says Brad is egotistical and that he's he'd be ashamed to see Brad in public with, with him. <sighs> Brad's unkempt. I guess he gets with Karen because he wants her to fix him. Oof, Stoney said. Dale Allen, my economics professor, told me he was disgusted by how he's dressed like a, a, a hippie and gives certain girls dirty looks in class. I want to be his friend, but he's got to He's got to do better than that, Jr. said. 6 a.m. Jr. Ken and Stoney are having breakfast at the Spirit Club. It is a good breakfast. Boiled eggs, toast, bacon, and orange juice. Jr. ate his toast with a whole lot of butter. Ken ate his with jelly and drank some milk. J.R. and Stoney have orange juice. I don't think J.R. wants to talk about Brad anymore. It just seems like Brad doesn't want to hang out with me, uh, with me and J.R. Because we're on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, way too far from him, Ken said. Why? Stoney asked. Because you live in the country club and Jarrah lives at the ranch. But yet he picks a condo in town. He's no better than than we are, Ken said. He hangs out with Jim Bob because he lives in a uh, he lives in a subdivision two story on the west side of town. But yet you go across the east line, sorry the prep school should have never accepted you First of all, back home in Carrollton, I never went to, to private school, except for maybe one year. One year. And secondly, if Brad is trying to make points, proving politics, he better start having a better attitude, Stoney said. And JR, by the way, last weekend, I told Dad that you got me that uh, bus ticket to Dallas through the help of your Grandma Swain. He got really mad. Said that he was scared that I'm letting you into the club. 